Hi there, I'm Mindy Jensen. And I'm Carl Jensen. And this is the Mindy and Carl on Money Podcast, where we talk about what happens after you reach financial independence. Why do we call this show Mindy on Money? Because I want to. Whoa. On this episode of the Mindy and Carl and Alex on Money Podcast, Carl and I interview Alex, a digital nomad on the verge of quitting her corporate job. This episode is for all of you who are financially independent or on the verge of financial independence and you haven't quite cut the cord yet and you might have some anxiety about doing that. I know I did. Uh, when I, I know left, you did. Yeah. When I left my job, I was so freaked out that I wouldn't have things to do in my life. I thought I needed that job to give me something to do during the day, even though I knew we didn't need the money anymore. And it was tough. And I think a lot of people struggle with this. Uh, the reason for this is the same quality that makes us able to retire early. We're usually pretty motivated, pretty hardworking. We've really built up a career for ourselves that have allowed us to make the money, that have allowed us to retire early. But those skills are a detriment in retirement because FI is asking us to retire and shut all that stuff down and making the transition isn't easy. And that's a lot of what we talk about in this interview. Yeah, this is a really interesting story and you need to listen all the way to the end because I think we have a breakthrough right near the end at what Alex is actually going to end up doing. Okay, three, two, one. Alex, welcome to the Mindy on Money podcast. I am so excited to tell your story today. Let's jump right into it and give a little bit of background about your financial situation, where you grew up, how you grew up, and how you got to where you are today. Okay, sounds good. I am super excited to be on the show. I grew up in an upper middle class family in China. So I moved to the US after high school. And my parents and grandparents are both relatively well off. So money is not something that I care about or think about very much as a child. It's just always there when I need it. I don't actually remember there is anything that I wanted that I did not get. So my parents are just very generous people. And I remember when I was a kid, there is this shelf at home. And then my dad just always leave money for me to use on that shelf. And after I use it, it just get replenished. It's like magic. They don't even ask like, where do you spend your money? Where did the money go? And also my grandparents will give me money too. So that's me as a child. And I have always been a very good kid, like a pretty responsible kid with everything, with school, with money, all aspects of my life. So I, I must be born a natural minimalist. I don't really like to own a lot of things. To me, things just, you know, owning the things, there's more cost than just buying them, but also the mental space that they're taking. So when I buy something, I always make sure it's nice in quality and it's something I really wanted. So I had about almost like 10K, $10,000 in savings by the time I was 18. And that's when I moved to the U.S. after high school. And I met my husband in college and we have been together ever since. I discovered FI around 2014, 2015-ish. So that's about two to three years after college graduation. And even before we found FI, uh, my husband and I were already actively saving and investing. So it actually did not change our lifestyle very much. We lived pretty happily and we did not spend very much money at all, but we had a lot of fun. Like we went out fun vacations in Hawaii, Japan, Mexico, Alaska, and we saw the Northern Lights, but we did not feel restricted. I think back then in the FI community, the FI seekers in that era is all about like buckling down, spend as little as possible, but that's really not how we feel. But we have a pretty good savings rate in general. And uh, what I did back then is that it gave us a goal to work towards. And we reached about $1 million in net worth in 2017. And now we're at about $3.8 million. So that's pretty cool. One thing I have to ask you, and it, I'm asking you because it relates to our situation. Mindy and I always saved too, but we had no idea what we were really saving for. And it sounds like you were a saver even b before you discovered financial independence. Did you have any idea what you were saving for? And if not, what was your reason for saving? Yeah, I, I think the first reason is just, we just don't spend very much money. Like we feel like we had enough. We live in a pretty nice apartment back then. And then 
we we eat pretty well we vacation we try experiences it just naturally we don't we don't feel like we need that much stuff or money to be happy i think that's one thing and then our salary is pretty good uh, right off the bat so we're able to save but in terms of saving for something we actually do have something we're saving for so this is 2000 2012 is the year we graduated and as soon as we graduated we moved to this to west coast and if you think back then there was the housing market crash and then 2012 was the time when the market start to go up so then back then i think it's what's better time to buy a house so we really want to buy a house so into beginning of 2013 we we're able to buy our first home and then uh, this is one of our biggest money regret is we actually paid off our house very fast <laughs> so we had a fully paid off house probably just uh three four years of after owning it um we have since sold that house but still probably back then we were saving for paying off that house yeah and that's that's something that is a huge discussion in the fi community do you pay off your house if you have a low mortgage rate or do you keep the mortgage and some people can't get over the the debt aspect of having a mortgage and want to pay it off as fast as possible. Some people can get over that or say, you know what? I don't really care that I have a mortgage. I am going to, I consider it such low cost. I'm going to put my money elsewhere. And, you know, that's Carl and I feel that way. We put our money elsewhere, but it's really whatever helps you sleep at night. And if not wanting any debt at all, including a mortgage is your goal, then pay off your mortgage. It's your life. Don't listen to us. We kind of, we regretted it actually. Back then it was historically low. It's not that low. It was, ours was 3.375. So it's not crazy low, but it's pretty low. And after we discovered FI and when we read more and more about it, we start to, you know, question it. But by then we already paid it off. Uh, Fortunately, later we sold our house. So now those cash is liquidated. Cool. Uh, Can you tell us what your current work situation looks like? Yeah, so I work in a major tech company in Silicon Valley. It's my dream company. And I've been working remotely actually since 2018. And so this is prior to the pandemic. And up until this January, work has been really great. So I work with people I like. I had fun while doing very cool work, delivering tangible results. I'm very effective and efficient with my job. I don't procrastinate at all. But like typically I spend about three hours a day working and my coworkers, my stakeholders, my managers are still very happy with me. So since I'm in a remote role, we have been traveling all over the world. And even though we're financially independent for some time now, I just keep working. It's because work has been great. And this is my example is the perfect example to say, even you love your job, your job is great. You should still pursue financial independence because things can just change very quickly. So this January, our team had a major rework and my manager was laid off. And after she's gone, everything is just totally different. It's like 180 degrees shift. My best working friend, my best work friend was on the same team as me. She also left the company and thus it's just not great anymore. And I, I need to work a lot more and still my new manager isn't happy with it. So I plan to quit this April. You know, I think that's a really, really important point you just made. Regardless of how much you love your job, things can change. Circumstances can change. So that's one of the things that I hear from a lot of people. Oh, I don't need to pursue financial independence. I love my job. Yeah. You know what? I used to have a job that I loved until one day something happened and then I hated that job and I didn't want to go anymore. And if you're dependent on that salary to put food on the table and put gas in your car, then you can't quit on a whim. So I love that you loved your job and still pursued financial independence because look what happened. I hate to be right all the time, but uh, (laughs) when you, when you really, when you really love your job, that's also a great time to pursue financial independence because you could just still have this really great job and a pile of cash in the bank. How is that a bad scenario? Oh, it's the best. <laughs> so this April, you plan on leaving your company. Is there anything that they could do to keep you or are you just ready to leave? 
I think I'm right, ready to leave in the sense that, and I can talk a little bit more later. I'm almost using this job as my, emo, I always call it emotional pacifier. It's almost like a crutch for me. And I feel like without leaving it, I can never find out who I am or what the life on the other side would be. So I don't think they will be able to keep me. Another thing is currently, so I'm in the remote uh, remote position, but after the pandemic and everything with the return to office, my company actually has a very strong stance to get into the hybrid working. So three days in the office and two days um, at home. And with three days being in the office, I just can't sustain my travel lifestyle anymore. So I think that's one major factor as well. But I think the biggest reason it just, I I realize, and that's the reason I contacted you and Carl, is that I realized I'm going through this one more year syndrome and I'm going through it and it's okay while well, the job is great, but if it's not great anymore, then still going the one more year syndrome is not to my benefit. That is an excellent point. One more year syndrome, when you love your job and you're making great money and it works into your life, isn't nearly such an issue as one more year syndrome when you discover that you hate your job, but it pays well. So maybe I'll just squeak out one more year. It doesn't sound like this job is a good fit for you anymore. Yeah. Because you like travel is very important to you. You're a digital nomad living abroad, exploring the world. I mean, that's kind of a huge tenet of many, for many people for, for financial independence is just being able to travel everywhere. And now you've got this job that said, Hey, you used to be able to travel for the last six years. You've been able to travel, but now we need you back in the office. If that doesn't work, then see ya. I think you said something that was super important. You said, Something along the lines, please correct me if I got this wrong, but if you don't quit, you're never going to find out who you could be. Did I get that right? Or or you're never going to see what potential you could have. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty amazing. I'm thinking of other people we know in the financial independence community. And it doesn't work out like this for everyone, but you look at people like Pete, Mr. Money Mustache, that guy was working at a computer network company, like writing software for switches. And now, I mean, clearly no one can argue that he hasn't changed the world or at least a ton of lives. Like I'm retired because I found his blog. And uh, so it's incredible what he's done. And he's become so much more because he freed himself from the job. And I think uh, Doc G of uh, Diversify and the Earn Invest podcast and Brad Barrett from ChooseFi are two other great examples who... Uh, Doc G was a hospice doctor and he still does that part-time, but now he's got this great book and look at Brad with Choose Fi. He's changing lives with that as well. And these people wouldn't be doing these great things if they had clung to their, uh, I'll use your word, the emotional pacifier and stayed at their nice cushy job. They had to liberate themselves from that to find out who they could really be. I might not be that successful and I don't even expect to be, but it's kind of like, I don't know if you play the video game Sims, right? So if you play Sims, you have these life aspirations and you can choose one, you have all these milestones, you can hit it and then you complete it. And then after you complete one aspiration, you don't just keep playing with the same aspiration. You probably switch a different one. I almost feel like I have completed almost everything I want to do in a corporate job perspective so i want to try something different and see and even say i will become an artist and nowhere near as good as i am a corporate employee but maybe that's okay because this is already my second aspiration i'm trying not the only one what are some of the things that you would like to pursue once you no longer have formal employment i think that's the part i'm actually struggling with i don't know exactly what I want to do. And I have been trying to find out what I want to do actually since 2017. Uh, And it has been many, many years and no luck. I think recently now I set my mind into a quitting mindset. I probably know, I probably have more idea, but yet it's still, 
I don't have this one set goal to say I want to become a great artist and this is what I'm striving for. Even though I love painting and I love outdoor outdoorsy stuff, I, I love traveling. There are a lot of things I actually like to do, but they're not just the, the one thing that I just find it to be my life mission. So that's what I'm struggling with a little bit, to be honest. Well, I don't think you have to have a life's mission right now. You can take time off. I mean, just because you've only, and I say this in air quotes, you've only been working three hours a day doesn't mean you haven't been accomplishing a ton. And having a job takes up a lot of headspace. Having projects that you're working on takes up headspace. So once you leave formal employment, it takes a little while to decompress. And it's okay to sit on the beach with a Mai Tai in your hand and just chill for a little bit. I wouldn't recommend doing that for like the next 37 years, but having a bit of a break and giving yourself an opportunity to go to the library or create a bucket list or just explore your painting. Maybe you take a painting class and you're like, oh, I love watercolors. And look at how great I am. Or, hey, I don't like watercolors at all. I'm better off with acrylics or oils or whatever. Or you discover sculpture or you discover that you want to write a book. I mean, have you started writing down your bucket list? Do you have one going? So, yeah, I, I actually do have a list. I actually have a list of, I think, 52 things I want to do after I uh, quit my job. I think what the difference is, I guess this is maybe I need a whole mindset change or maybe not. I don't know. Is this, I think up until today, I have been in an upward tra trajectory and it's a very linear trajectory based on social norms. So it's a sense of getting better, right? I have, so in my career, I have a job. It's not just a job, it's a career and I'm gaining experience and growing in my career. And I got promoted really fast, like since graduation up until uh, recent years, I actually got promoted very fast into where I am today. And also my life in general, right? Like starting from a little kid, I get trained, right? You have good grades, you go to a good school, you find a good job, and then you get promoted. And then I find I-Fi, you reach I-Fi. So the whole time I feel like I'm working towards a goal and I, and I actually do enjoy the journey. So I didn't feel like I'm tapping it out at all. Like I'm enjoying the journey along the way and I reached a goal. I feel like I reached all the goals that the social norm, the society sets it as for the external validation. And now, I mean, the only thing I can do is probably just bigger numbers, more money. But then I know I'm pretty content with the number, with what I have, because we don't spend very much money. So then now the goal is gone. So it's not that I'm struggling to find exactly the, all these lists of things I want to do, but more just a general sense of where my life is going is where I'm struggling. Well, I think that's interesting. The the goals you you're a goal oriented person. You say you you know don't procrastinate at work. You jump right in, get all your stuff done. That's valid. So you have fifty two things on your list, which is awesome. That'll get you through the first year if you do one every week. But what Carl and I have discovered is once you have an idea and you start taking notes, all of a sudden you can't take enough notes. There's like so many more ideas coming. So as you work through this first 52 item list, uh, I encourage you to continue adding at the bottom of the list or rearranging uh, when, if they're not in a specific order, like first week, I'm going to do this. Second week, I'm going to do this, or it's just random 52 things. Continue adding. And as you start to think, oh, what else can I add to my list? You will discover so many more things that you can add to your list. I've got uh, something to say, and then I've got maybe some specific recommendations that we can talk about. One thing I've always thought about the FI community is we're not equipped well to retire early because I've seen I've seen your background, Alex. You're a very motivated, motivated person. And so am I. So how do you turn that off? How do you go from working, like doing well in school and then going to a great job and you're making a lot of money and then we're expected to retire? And I'll back up and say a lot of, I hate saying this, but a lot of uh, non-high achieving people struggle with retirement because they have their job and, and then all of a sudden they have all this free time and they don't know what to do. 
And I think we might actually have it a little bit worse because uh, we tend to work really hard and we're super motivated. And then how do you take that away from us? And a lot of times it's an all or nothing situation. A job is something you have to be at. So I think we're ill-equipped for this early retirement thing. And I struggled with it. Yes. Yes, you did. A lot. Because, yeah, everyone needs meaning and work in their life. And I, I think that applies to like 99% of people, even even people who maybe aren't as motivated. Everyone needs some kind of thing to do in their life. Although, I don't think it has to take up 40 hours of time, but I've got a, a couple of recommendations. Alex, you mentioned you walk a lot. Is that correct? I thought I thought you put a step yes. count in there or am I thinking of something else? Oh, yeah. So I think the two years ago, I was averaging about uh, 18,000 steps and then, and then I figure it's a little bit too much. So now I'm averaging 16,000 steps a day. So I do walk okay. a lot. And because I'm location, uh, my location is flexible. I typically all these steps are walking along the beach. So which is awesome. I think that's super good. And one thing I like to do, so I go for 25,000 steps a day, which is kind of difficult because that's like 10 miles and you can only listen to so many podcasts and music. But I like to not listen to anything and not even touch my phone, just bring along paper and pen. There's a Stanford study about this I'll put in the show notes that shows how walking and not looking at your phone and not doing anything spurs creativity. So your brain becomes bored and your brain just starts throwing all kinds of crazy ideas at you. And it's pretty incredible when it starts to happen. You get into a flow state, even though you're not really doing anything except walking around. So that's been a big boon for me. Plus, if you walk 25,000 steps like me, that'll fill a lot of your time. And a fun time too. I know you're you're digital nomadic, so you're always in new places. And there's no better way to explore a new place than to just walk around. Um the next tip I have, and this one might be a little bit harder, and it's hard for me too because I consider myself an introvert, but like how many great things have happened just because, and I'm looking at Mindy here, just because we've talked to people, like we've gone to conferences. So the the craziest, silliest thing is, and maybe you should tell this story, how you sat in the wrong seat at a session at a FinCon conference, which is like a financial independence creator thing, and it changed your life, right? Did you want to tell that story super quick? <laughs> This is a good one, Alex. Uh, yeah, we were attending our first FinCon and either I read the session wrong or I walked into the wrong room and I found myself sitting in the very front row all the way inside by the wall. And these two guys get up and start talking. And I was like, oh, this is something about technology and that's not my jam at all. I'm in the wrong room. So I go to stand up and I turn my head and I discover that while I was waiting for the room to fill up and these guys to start talking, the room filled up. It was standing room only. And it is very clear that I'm the only person in this room who does not know who these two guys are. And it would have been so disruptive to get up and leave because I was in the front row and all the way tucked in that I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to hear this presentation today. And it turned out it was Josh Dorkin and Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets. And they were talking about how to move your website from a small hosting company to a large hosting company, which is Carl's place, not my place. So I'm barely listening to this conversation. And they're like, blah, 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 real estate. Oh, I like real estate. Wait, what is this? These guys have a website where people talk about real estate investing? I've never heard of this before. I'm excited, though. I want to listen to more. And afterwards, I stopped the guys and I started talking to them. And now I've been working there for eight years. And this was 10 years ago that I saw that conference. But I've been working there for uh, eight, actually almost nine years now. And that is the job that I love so much. I would almost do it for free. I say almost because I don't want my boss to hear this and be like, oh, we don't have to pay you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had lots of things like that in our daily life. I guess we're, our lifestyle lends a little bit more towards that because we own the co-working space. So we have like-minded people there and we have lots of people that come to Longmont, but there's so many great ideas. Alex, one of the things I'm actually working on, it's a software project. I don't even know if I've told Mindy about this. I have you haven't. I didn't know you were working on anything. I have a friend coming to town. <laughs> And there's Facebook groups for, for for digital nomadic type people and five people to share their living space. But it's kind of clunky because it's a Facebook group. I'm like, 
why don't we create a website with a Google map as a front end and then people could list their room or their house? It'll be very lightweight, very simple, but that's one of the things I'm working on. And that's just because of another, I think we were at a, a roller derby with some friends out of all the things. And we started talking about this. <laughs> But, yes, I remember this now. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit harder for you, but there's choose five groups all over the place. And even if you're an introvert like me, I think you'll gain great value by pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. If you Maybe you are an extrovert and I'm saying the wrong thing here, but go to a local meetup group and just talk to people and because oh, this community has so many crazy good ideas. Or maybe go to a, if you happen to be back in the States, go to a... Uh, Camp Fi or economy or something like that. And I'm going to tag on to the end of what Carl said uh, with several websites. First of all, there's choosefi.com slash local, which lists all the cities, states, and even countries that there are local Choose Fi meetups happening in. So when you find yourself traveling to a different country or thinking about traveling to a different country, check out and see if there's a local Choose Fi group. Um, I don't know in, you know, the rest of the world, if anybody there speaks English, if it's definitely just, I would imagine the podcast is in English, but, you know, are they primarily other digital nomads who are just traveling around or are they people who like maybe expats living in those countries or even just local people who have discovered the podcast who want to have conversations, but we've never been to a Choose Fi meetup that was boring. We've never been to one where we didn't find somebody to talk to or several somebodies to talk to about very interesting things. And very infrequently is it always about money. We talk about like it's kind of just assumed, oh, we all have this money thing in common. So let's look for other things that we have in common, too. And there's always other things that we have in common. There's a Facebook group called Go With Less. That's Amy Rutherford and Tim Rutherford running that group. It's more for digital nomads, but there's also a lot of people in that group who have figured out their money and now just travel forever. And they have a lot of meetups too. There's a, a thread in their Facebook group that will say, you know, hey, where are you this week? And people will, you know, I'm in Lisbon, I'm in London, I'm in, you know, Russia, wherever they happen to be. There's just always somebody somewhere. And meetup.com, is that a, do they operate outside of the U.S.? I don't know if they do. So if I'm wrong about that, sorry. But one last thing I want to say is you've already accomplished a ton of things in your life. It's okay to just be selfish for a little bit. Oh, I have 17 countries I want to explore. It's perfectly valid to explore those 17 countries while also not really accomplishing anything else. You don't have to just always be doing something. I think that drives me crazy, but. Oh my goodness, you drive me <laughs> <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> but to, to build on Mindy's point, we have a local friend here who was a real estate agent and she did not like being a real estate agent, but she had enough money. So she quit. And I was talking to her and it took her about two years to find her way. She eventually started an like online soap company. And I'm like, wow, how was it like two years without really having a clear path? You're wandering around in the woods. She's like, well, it was difficult, but I'm so thankful for it because I got to where I really needed to be. And I'm not sure I would have ended up there if I would have jumped right into something else. It was nice to have the time to think about myself and to ponder life and what I really wanted to do with it. So I think there's value to that, although I think that'd be very difficult for me as well. <laughs> yeah, but, let me confirm that. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, a couple more things and then I'll shut up and let you talk, Alex. You said you had 52 things, which I think is great. If you're, I've got that same list on my phone. I've got a Google Keep document and I think I've probably got like 400 things on there now. It gets longer like every month and once in a while I'll check one thing off there. One thing I encourage you to do is experiment. If you don't like something, you don't have to continue doing it. Just throw it out the window and move on to the next thing. But I think, I don't, did you see Alex's watercolor paintings? Yes, they're beautiful. I know they're beautiful. I was looking through the National Park one and all those were great. I've been to 11 out of 12. I haven't made it to Crater Lake, but, and if there's any site we can share with the audience to show your work, that'd be awesome. Or if I could splice some of them into this video, that'd be cool. But you're Art is beautiful. So if I was your, I'm not your life coach, I can barely handle my own life. But if I was, I'd encourage you to explore more of your painting if you 
enjoy that. And I thought I had one more thing to say here. I'm trying to, I have a hard time reading my own handwriting. Yeah, I have a hard time reading your handwriting too. Yeah, I can't really uh, see what I'm talking about here. But yeah, don't be afraid to be bored and don't be afraid to experiment. If something doesn't work out, that's great because you've learned that you don't ever need to do that thing again. I'm I'm kind of a car person and I rented a Corvette because I've always liked cars. And it turns out that driving a Corvette around Los Angeles wasn't such a great experience, but now it's out of my system and I never have to do that again. I, the, yeah. The, the thing I think about is, okay, here's my closing final thought. But, <laughs> so, so it, it, and I know this isn't your problem, but some people are like, Oh, I'm so worried about quitting work because I'll be bored or I won't know what to do with myself. And I think when people say that it's a lack of imagination because the world is so big and beautiful and there's so many people and things to offer. And there's just an unlimited amount of opportunity and so many great things. So if you can think of things to do, and I'm not saying this to, to you, Alex, this is just in general. If you can't figure out something valuable to do with your life outside of a job, you haven't thought about it enough because I stopped my job and I had so much anxiety. Like I, I remember a couple months after I'm like, oh man, I if they offer me more money, maybe I'd go back. And, and maybe a, a year later, I'm like, you know, I don't think I'd go back, but maybe if they doubled or tripled my money. And then now I'm like, there's no way I'd ever go back. I don't want ever, anyone <laughs> ever telling me what to do in my life, except for maybe Mindy here. Uh, <laughs> maybe. She's looking at me now. <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely going to tell you what to do. So I think it gets easier. And I've heard this from other people too. You might struggle to find your footing a little bit at first, but it definitely gets easier and more fun. Like I wouldn't trade the life I have now. Seven years this April, I'll have retired. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But if you're one of the rare people and it doesn't work out for you, and I'm, I'm certain this isn't going to be you, but for some reason, if it didn't, you have great experience, you have a great resume, you could just Go back to work and continue doing that again. And you know you've tried that experiment, the early retirement experiment, and it didn't work. So. Yeah, I think there's a lot of shame in the FI community about, oh, I went back to work. Who cares? If you like working, that doesn't make you a bad person. What is it that you like about your job? And what is it that you don't like about your job? If you could do something for a couple of hours a day or a couple of hours a week that helps somebody else, like volunteering for a nonprofit or working with small businesses to help them overcome whatever hurdle they have that you know how to fix, but they couldn't afford you at your current salary, you don't need the money. So... You can do it for a nominal fee. Oh, Alex does XYZ job for $10 an hour for small businesses who have less than X revenue. And then being helpful to somebody is such a huge accomplishment. I helped Carl do this one project that he had no idea how to do. And it, I mean, I'm just making that up. But like I helped him and his business fix this one problem. And now he is eternally grateful to me. And I didn't do it for the money. I did it for the sense of accomplishment. And now he's going to tell his friends, oh, yeah, Alex helped me out with this project. And she was so good. She really helped me figure out my problem. She only works with small companies like you're you get around your your name gets around. And then you can also when when they're paying you $10 an hour, you can be like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And not feel bad about it. Okay, I have one final thought, and then I'll, I'll, I'll really be quiet. <laughs> maybe, maybe pull up my show notes. One of the things I've realized too is, and I know you read a lot of stoicism, Alex, but life isn't about the goal. It's not about accomplishing something. It's about the journey to that goal. And I think of this like I built a deck in my backyard, and the whole time I was building this thing, the thought that kept going through my head it was, oh, I can't wait till this thing is finished. It's going to look so great, and blah blah blah. But it, it it did feel great when it was finished. It felt great for like a day or two. And then that feeling leaves you and then you have to find something else. So I think one of the keys to living a successful five life is to really enjoy the journey and the small moments. And it sounds sound pretty cliche. I sound like a... Yeah. A, <laughs> I, <laughs> Sorry. I, I, you're... 
I sound like an internet meme at this point or like a Hallmark card or something like that. But yeah, finding joy and beauty and really enjoying the process is important. Okay. Now I'll really shut up. What do you think, Alex? <laughs> I, I think the internet has is almost like a selection bias. So if you think about all these FI people, and then the ones that you hear about are the ones that's able to have a new career, maybe in preaching FI, in talking about FI. So it's like Pete, Mr. Manny Vestash, right? So he has his work, and then he so the, he FI'd, he retired, and he started this new thing, and then we know about him for this new thing. But I think there must be a lot of people who also FI'd, who also retired and didn't do much and still content and happy. And I think maybe that's what more likely I will fit into those bucket of people. Because after all, it's like how many people are successful um, to turn into a second career? I want to say career in quotes. So it's not like necessarily a money making career, but still a career. It's like how many people are able to do that? There are a lot of people who are not able to. And if you're not able to do it, maybe it's still OK. Um, that's what I'm trying to tell myself. And, and, I, think, and I think like Pete yeah. is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go on, Alex. Um, and then and then I think the biggest thing about work is, I, I guess for me personally, I've been lucky in a sense that just the past few years, my work really, I'm experiencing a work with only the upside and no downside. And I think that's what I struggle a little bit because like Mindy said is, oh, you can you can do all these things. You can travel and uh, exp do these experiments. I feel like I was already doing it with my work. So it's like, I have a pretty full life and these sense of achievement, good friends, good pay and location flexibility uh, with the work. And I'm open to do everything I already want to do. So I think what I find, find missing is I'm worried about those, the good side of the work being gone. but. I guess the reality is I just had to face the reality is work is not always only the good things. Um, yeah. And yeah, I've, I've got one comment about Pete and then one comment about what you just said. I think Pete is probably misunderstood because people know him from the blog, but people don't see him in day to day life. Like, uh, like we own a co working space with him. And when, when he's around, half of our lives are like fixing a leak in the roof or building a wall in the co-working space or, or running a new electrical circuit. We installed a heat pump in there and, and all this stuff. So, and that, but that's what he loves to do. He loves to build stuff. He loves to create stuff. The one word that might define him is, is being a carpenter or maybe builder. He isn't really like this Mr. Money mustache is kind of a character that he created to, it's, it's a different voice and how he really is and what his life looks like. And I think there's a lesson in that, despite the guy probably being a multimillionaire, he's okay going on a roof and fixing it because that's what he likes to do. You mentioned the sense of achievement with your job. And I think that's what you have to replace in retirement. With me, like I love to write code. I thought that was great. But I think you can create the same feelings with doing other stuff too. I put a link to something in the show notes about Doc G's book, Taking Stock. He has a whole part in there about finding identity and discovering discovering your identity. And the thing I thought was really cool is he talks about himself. And I think he mentioned he went to some party with a bunch of other physicians. And he was like, I can't really relate to these people. Like, I don't feel like my identity is a physician, is being a physician. And what he came to is, I'm a communicator. I like to talk. I like to write. I like to podcast and, and help people through that. So I think that was pretty interesting. If your identity is really working, it, and I, I imagine this might be for some people, maybe their identity is working at a big company. And I think some people like being told told what to do. And that's fine if that's you. But I don't I think that's most people, but that's the whole challenge and fun part about FI, I think, trying to replace that satisfaction you get with your job with something you come up yes. with on your own. And I think it's way more gratifying because you came up with it. You're not being told what to do. I think you'll find it tremendously satisfying, both the process of figuring out, figuring it out and once you have figured it out. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I think really the adjustment comes in is like work is a comforting sense of achievement. 
And also after you spend 10 plus years in your career, you do it day in, day out, you get really good at it. And also because of the platform, so the company you're in, like things we do, we have a very good, big impact on people's life. It's it's not me, you know, I'm never able to achieve that, the scale myself on my own. But because I'm in the company, I'm in the position I'm in, the work I do actually impact a lot of people and impact their life positively, I like to think. And I've been doing it for 10 plus years, so it's familiar, you're good at it. And then you receive recognition. So now with after I quit the job, I don't have the platform and then finding a way to still be beneficial to people and get a similar sense of achievement. And I like how you said it. It's like, you know, maybe just finding that, finding a way itself deserves a round of applause too. Absolutely. Finding that, discovering who you are, how you identify yourself, not as employee of big company, but Alex is a communicator, a fixer, a connector. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you could be. What are you? You could just be creative. Like just at that, I use the word just like that's a bad thing. You could be a creative person who is sharing her art with the world. And if you don't sell a billion paintings, that's okay. If you sell one, what a sense of accomplishment that somebody loves your work so much that they want to give you money for it. Um, I would really strongly suggest sitting down over the course. This isn't like a five minute process, by the way, to anybody listening, Alex, to you specifically, this is not going to be something like, Hmm, what do I want to do when I grow up and quit my job? Oh, I just want to do this. Like there's, there's a lot of things that you need to think about, but what brings you joy? What are you passionate about? What is mildly interesting and you'd like to learn more about it? It doesn't have to be something that that provides an accomplishment. And I think that a lot of people in the FI space are, I mean, Carl struggled with this too. What am I going to do now that I don't have a job? I have to do something. No, you don't. You can just be, you can dive into the latest Stephen King book that is just candy for your brain. And I think Stephen King's awesome, not talking smack about his books, but he's not going to change your life with a book. He's not going to show you a new way to, you know, accomplish things. He's just going to tell you a really great story. And that's perfectly valid to not learn anything from a book and just enjoy it for the great story that it's telling you. It's perfectly valid to go to a museum. Like the next time you're in France, go check out the Louvre. It's beautiful. They've got the Mona Lisa there, but they also have other paintings too. And the building itself is pretty spectacular. It's totally fine to just be for a while. And while you're being, ideas pop in. It's when you're constantly having all of these things coming at you all the time that you don't have time to think about what it is that you really love. Yeah, I, I don't want to see the Mona Lisa. I'd like to see an update of Alex's National Park uh, calendar. <laughs> uh, what, one really quick thing I'd say is uh, a lot of people, when I see them quit, the first thing they do is say, oh, I'm going to do, and I don't get the sense from you, but I see it from other people. They say, oh, okay, I'm going to do this hustle and this hustle. A friend was saying this once, and then another friend said, whoa, whoa, hold up a second. You just quit. What would you do with your life if you weren't allowed to make any money for the next year? And I think that's kind of a cool question because it reframes it. In other words, what do you really want to do if you don't have that, I'm trying to think, that external motivation of making yet another dollar pulling you? And I have to fight that off all the time, which is silly. Like we have enough money. We don't need any more. But uh, yeah. For those I, of you not watching I on the YouTube channel. <laughs> I am currently sitting here making a mean face at Carl because what was the first thing you did after you quit your job? You started working on that dentist app. Yeah. He learned a whole different software that he had never programmed in before to work on some project that ended up not going anywhere, but took a ton of time. You were working on like 40 hours a week. Yeah, I know. That was like a whole job. I got another job except I work for free, but it sounds like this isn't an issue with you, Alex. <laughs> wait, wait, but that sounds, okay. So the money part, does not sound like me. So I'm actually not really motivated to say I'm quitting my job and then yet I want to find another way to 
make money because I think my best chance of making more money is if I was just to stay in my current job or stay in a similar job in another corporate because I have the skills I've been building this up that something scratch. So I'm actually not wanting to make more money, but I do resonate with Carl on this building thing. And on that, I really want to comment. So one thing I want to learn, uh, one thing I want to do on my list I want to learn is I want to learn JavaScript and React Native. Um, because I, although I have been in tech for a long time, I was not a web or a mobile developer and mobile and web uh, development always interests me. And I want to learn this. So one, I want to learn new things. And then two, I think this might be a skill that's more helpful for smaller organizations or smaller business people in need. Uh, they probably need this skill more, a little bit more than what I do for my day job. So that's, what Carl did is actually exactly what I want to do. So that scares me a little bit. Well, that's what you want to do. And that's great that you want to do that. You want to learn these new languages and maybe you will help somebody out. I wouldn't suggest learning these new languages 40 hours a week. And I don't think that Carl was doing it necessarily because he wanted to learn this new language. Well, I shouldn't actually speak for you since you're sitting right here. But it seemed like he was desperate to do something with his time and not be, what is that phrase? Idle hands are the devil's playthings or something like that. Uh, and he wanted to be doing something. I don't think it was necessarily you wanted to be making this project. Yeah. And I was thinking about making more money, but it sounds like Alex wants to learn this. Uh, for a new challenge and to help organizations maybe even on a volunteer basis. And I think that's great. Yeah, I think so too. I think that the more that I talk to you and, you know, what I've read when you emailed us, I really think that volunteering for organizations so that you can help them fix a problem is going to be something that gives you that sense of accomplishment, but it's also something you can do a couple of hours a day, a couple of hours a week in a very short time frame, and then move on with your life. Find another company to volunteer with. Yeah. So we should probably wrap this up soon. Two, two more questions for you, Alex. Uh, well, first of all, do you have anything else for us? And the other thing is it might be neat to have a follow-up with, with you maybe six months to see what you're doing it and how it worked out for you. Um, so first of all, do you have anything else for us? Um, I think my biggest thing, one big reason I reach out is exactly one thing you mentioned is speak to people, speak to the community. So I figured maybe if I get on the show or if I talk to you and if you know someone who needs help and there are something I can do to you know help out on a good cause, I'm happy to help out. Or if there's just any idea come up that you want to build something together, I'm happy to help build as well. So uh, I think that's one big motive to drive me to reach out to you. So yeah. Perfect. So if you have a need for Alex's help, you can email Mindy at MindyOnMoney.com and I will connect you with Alex. Please go into detail about what sort of things you need. Um, Alex, do you want to give any context about what sort of help you can give? So Alex, what sort of work do you do or what sort of uh, skills do you have that you could offer to somebody so that when they're reaching out, they're not asking you to like help them sew clothes and that's not your jam? <laughs> <laughs> I think what I'm good at is I'm good at bringing an idea from ideation to commercialization. So to drive an overall project forward and specific areas, I can help out with marketing and also I'm pretty good with data, data analytics, so SQL or, you know, uh, Tableau, uh, Power BI, Looker, all those data, uh, data related tools. So yeah. Awesome. So if that is something that you're looking for in your company, email Mindy at MindyOnMoney.com and I will share your information with Alex. And if you guys are a good fit, maybe we can make a Fi work match. That'd be awesome. Cool. Maybe that will be a project going forward is build this type of matchmaking, like a marketplace for people who wants to volunteer and want to help out with small business or small businesses or nonprofits that need help. 
Ooh, there we go. The Phi Brain Trust. If you are a financially independent person who no longer has a W-2 and you would like to be Alex or be in Alex's position where you're offering up your skills, you can also email me, Mindy at MindyOnMoney.com. And I can connect you with other skills. This is actually kind of a cool project, the Five Brain Trust. Yeah, this might be Alex's first project, just to create a site <laughs> with your new React skills, create a website to where five people can go on and either volunteer or offer their skills to other folks. Ooh, okay. Like maybe stay maybe tuned. this will be my my platform to ask someone to help. So I forgot to what ask one thing. So one thing I do love about my job and also just working in general is I love working with friends. So I do not like working alone. I know lots of people like say, oh, this uh, collaboration thing, working with people thing at work, struggles. Like that's my favorite thing about working in a job because you get to work with a bunch of people towards the same goal. So I actually like that idea. Maybe I want to move it forward. So if there's anyone listening to this and want to join me, and work on those projects together. Uh, that would be a good way to make friends. <laughs> awesome. And again, email Mindy at MindyOnMoney.com and I will connect everybody together. Ooh, that's me. I'm a connector. I love this. Yes, okay, you are a connector. Ooh, this was a lot of fun, Alex. I'm super excited for the, uh, now we have to get this URL before somebody else does, FiBrainTrust.com. Uh, see if that works out. If it doesn't, we'll come up with another name. And of course, we will announce it on the show. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. If you've got skills, if you need skills, reach out to us. Alex, this was so much fun. I really liked hearing your story and I appreciated you reaching out to us. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me and nice talking to you both. Yeah, thank you so much. Let's meet up somewhere around the world one of these years. Carl, that was super fun. I loved the end where the FiBrainTrust.com idea came to fruition. I'm super excited for this potential. And again, if you have a skill that you would like to share with other people, hit me up, Mindy at MindyOnMoney.com, or should I say Mindy at FiBrainTrust.com. Yeah, we have the URL. Don't try to get it. We got it already. Yeah, don't <laughs> steal our idea. But if you'd like to collaborate with us, with Alex, with other people, uh, hit us up. Let's do a follow-up with Alex uh, in a couple months. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. All right. And as always, thank you for listening to the show. If you found this useful, if you know somebody who needs this information, please share it with them. And we have a Facebook group now, facebook.com slash groups slash Mindy on Money, where you can join other people in chatting about this episode or how great I am, how much you like Carl's hair, how cool we are together, or, you know, money topics in general. Alex, welcome to the bigger... Oh, 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 no, no, no. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> bigger pocket money. <laughs> Looper reel. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I did it perfect the first time. She called me Scott last week. I did. <laughs> oh, you're too funny. I didn't volunteer for this hair. I let Mindy have free artistic reign over my hair. And that's why it looks the way it does now. I'm not complaining. I like it. I, I know you like it. I'm so mad at you. You're, oh, why? Because you're throwing me under the bus when you look very attractive. I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying Except I, for this wampy's flat spot right here. I wanted to tell the backstory of my hair. It's. Uh, I really liked how Amy asked you. <laughs> Is that an intentional haircut? <laughs> Did you? I think she asked that because you've never had any different hair besides just straight to the skin. Yeah, so I'm pretty plain. I just put the same guard on the wall shaver and just cut my hair. I just don't care anymore. I'm too old to care. Yes, yeah, so I think his hair looks cute this way and it's going to keep looking like this. And if you have a problem with it, tell it to I don't care at go tell somebody else.com. But now I have to manage it. Like the top gets, the top is what long. What do you mean you have to manage it? All you do is nothing. Oh, I wake up and it looks like this. And then well, I have to do something with my own hair. You don't have to do anything with it. You yeah, can just go like this. You guys see this on YouTube. It... Well, I look like a psychopath. That's okay. I almost got kicked out of the gym today because of my hair. You didn't almost get kicked out of the gym today. Don't tell lies. Yeah, they're like, you don't look like your picture at all. We don't allow your types, <laughs> your type in here. 
think they thought I was in a gang or something. Nobody thinks you're in a gang. <laughs> what? You don't think I'm tough? Look at this. Would you want to mess with me after midnight and downtown Longmont? I don't think so. I would. Okay, let's end it there. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Is anyone still listening? No. Oh, 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 no, 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 oh, oh, no, no, no.